Yeah. We're all kind of, like I said, it's centered. Yeah. Do you want me to bring it back a little bit so you get the whole thing? Are you good where we you're gotta, at? I got we all. We're splitting the difference because we at least want to try and hear a little bit. That's valid. That's yeah. Valid. All right. At such time, I'll probably remove this, but we're going like this right now. Well, welcome everybody that's here. Um, yeah. Friends and f no family members, right? Friends, friends and friends. friends. Yeah. Family. <laughs> yeah. Family and the God, Lord. God's yeah. Family. Yeah. We have the pleasure of seeing these two persons present themselves before God and these witnesses for the purpose of being united in holy bonds of matrimony. Therefore, if any person can show just cause why these two may not lawfully be joined together as husband and wife, let him now speak or forever hereafter hold this peace. No objections? No. No. All right, we're good. <laughs> Marriage is a divine, distinctive, designed, directed, and enduring institution instituted by God Almighty and given to man in a state of innocence and happiness. Hear the divine record of the first marriage in human history, recorded in Genesis chapter 2, 18 through 25. And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone, and I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and he brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whosoever called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, the fowl of the air, and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found to help me for him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead of therein. And the rib, which the Lord had taken from man, he made a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of the man. Therefore man shall leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And there both stood there, and the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. God gives specific instructions and regulations for the government and the institute of marriage. Paul addresses it when he says, Wives, submit to yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, and husbands as the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, it's you. Love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he may present to himself a glorious, glorious church, and not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it, it should be holy without blemish. So ought men love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. No man has ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even the Lord and the church. For we as members of the body, of his flesh, of his bones, for this cause shall man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall too be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even himself and the wife, see that she reverence her husband. That's in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 through 33. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to be glorified in this service and in this relationship, in this marriage. In the name of Jesus and for his sake we pray. Amen.